Hey Siri. Go ahead. Play the MRA podcast with Kyle and Kamal. This is a Mad Rights Activist Podcast, episode 31, where we focus on relationships, sports, and pop culture from a managed point of view. First of all, we want to thank our listeners, each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging with the fellas. What up, everybody? On today's show, Jordan steps to the red table. Going to see uh, that Auntie rehab. Jada, yeah, yeah. Auntie Jada. <laughs> Tristan, oh man, Tristan, this time his dirt. Affected his boy Travis Scott. Boy. Never a good thing. Never a good thing. And today's hated male of the week is the giant CEO Larry Bear. His wife stepped up, homie. It's rare, but we appreciate it. All that and more. Right now. MRI podcast of Kyle and Kamal. I am Kyle. I am Kamal. Man, you seem a little. You seem like you missed it. <laughs> was you reading something? I was looking at audience feedback. It <laughs> <laughs> was a bit read that man. And we are saving relationships one listener at a time. Got a cruise ship date coming up, Kamal. That's cool, man. Yeah, What's man. up? First one leaving uh, today. No, t- it starts tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, I don't even know where I'm going. I just know I'm leaving from Cape Canaveral, like where they do the rockets. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I can't even tell you what's going. The Bahamas or something. St. Thomas is that the same thing as Bahamas? Yeah, I don't know, man. Exactly. The Virgin Islands. Yeah. If listen, if I was a lady, if I was your wife, yeah, I would know exactly where every you stop know was. Exactly where every stop. I give a damn. I just need to know when we leaving. And when, when we you, coming back. And when you coming back. <laughs> That's all you need to know. What's, what area are we going to? We're going to the Atlantic. Okay. Well, because when you perform, you perform in, in the water anyway, right? Yeah, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but there's stops. Your wife would be like, there's stops. Where are you going on the stop? <laughs> I went on the cruise by myself. It was like when you, when it was time to dock. Why'd you go by yourself? Just uh, I was fresh off the, the, the divorce. You were trying to get some tail? No. Nah. Wait a minute. You told a story on here where your where your wife. She yeah. Yeah. Is this the same she, story? Same story, but the actual same cruise. Yeah. Different story, but it was okay. like when it was time to dock. Yeah. I it, thought you said it was two tickets though. I initially uh-huh. got two tickets, and uh-huh. then like oh fucking Sherlock yeah. dickhead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sherlock <laughs> dickhead mess that up for you. Yeah. So then it was one. Yeah, it was yeah. one, and just like walking around, like yeah, that was weird. Like, it's just boring. Yeah. I'm heading back to the ship. Yeah, enough of this. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, that uh, that's that's coming up. So I'm looking forward to that, man. Looking cool. forward to that. That that. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell a story on next week's uh, show about how I almost messed that up, though. Hmm. Yeah, I think I have to wait for next week. Okay, I got I you. Almost lost that booking. All right. I'm doing that. Uh, on a somber note, though, mm-hmm. we got to shout out the homie. Mike Wyman. Yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, member of the education. First of all, friend. Yeah. Family member. Family, man. Uh, Mike, um, February 25th, mm-hmm. uh, lost his battle with cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, cancer's got a pretty good record, man. Pretty, yeah. 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 I, I'm sick of it. I'm about ready for this, this guy to get taken down once mm-hmm. and for all. But uh, my main man, Mike, he had been um, battling this thing for, well, I've, I've known about it for seven years, mm-hmm. you know, and our last two shows, one, uh, he was affected. The one show, we had to have a stand-in because he was missing a lot of rehearsal dates because he just wasn't feeling up to it. Talking about who shot Daquan. Yeah, who shot Daquan. Mm-hmm. Um, and the one we did in December, we, we the one we kept shouting out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the one in 2018, he, he couldn't do it. Mm. And we had to get replacements for him mm-hmm. uh, because he physically wasn't up to it. How'd you meet Mike? Uh, we were in this improv troupe together. Okay. Here's the crazy thing about it. I started doing sketch. I'd never done sketch before. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do it. Yeah. But he had met some guys from Second City who were doing a sketch comedy show. Uh, and they were looking for performers and writers, mm-hmm. and he, you know, told me and suggested that I audition. Mm-hmm. And I think a couple of days before, I told my, you know, I, I, I wasn't gonna do it. I was scared. Yeah, I was like, no, nah, I don't think I'm gonna do it, man. And he gave me like a lecture, like, hey, you said you wanted to do this, you need to do it. This is mm-hmm. an opportunity for you. These people don't know you from a can of paint, so you know it's a blank slate. You go in there and do your thing, and. You know, let the chips fall where they may, and 
I did it because of that pep talk Mike gave me, wow. and, and the rest is history. I've been popping ever since. For the fans of the education, um, he was Abraham Lincoln. He was, uh, <laughs> he, yeah. Mike was the tall, skinny, older white guy the, yeah. with the dark hair. That's my man. Yeah, man. Hey guys, I want to take this time to ask you to subscribe to The World According to Cheryl. That is Cheryl Underwood's podcast. It's hilarious and I'm on it. Before we turn it up a little more upbeat, we do have to also uh, send a rest in peace shout out to Luke Perry. Oh my gosh. 90210, man. I think if you if you had to pick somebody if you wanted to be back in the day watching the show, it had to have been either the DJ guy, the guy DJing at, at lunch, or Luke Perry. But Luke Perry had all of them. I never watched it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a piece, Luke Perry. <laughs> I never watched it, man. But, I mean, I know Luke Perry. I know at the time he was big stuff. Yeah, man. He was in one of my favorite movies as a kid, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Layers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and I've seen him in, you know, you know vehicles yeah. since then. So, yeah. nah, man. And I, and I hate to see anybody go before they're ready to go. And apparently my man had a, a massive stroke. 52, man. At 52, man. And he, they had just announced that they were... Uh, Bring it back, nine zero two one zero. Uh, was he going to be on it? I believe so. He's also uh, on um, the show on Netflix, Riverdale. Uh, Riverdale. Yeah. So he probably wasn't going to be on every episode because he yeah. was doing dual work. But he would have been the big homie to yeah. come through. Pop, OG. pop in every now and again. So mm-hmm. that's going to be a little different for uh, the fans, and uh, yeah. you know, I feel bad for the family, yo. Yeah, man. Rest in peace, bro. Yo, Kamal. What's up? I finally finished my album, dog. The one you did in 2013. Yeah, man. <laughs> I know, okay. man. A long time ago, man. But I, you know, I said, you know what? I'm gonna finish this album. This thing is coming out eventually. Eventually, you know, you, you gotta finish. You can't give up. I can dig it. And eventually, it's finally here. Eventually, it's finally arrived, man. And okay. I was listening to it, man. This thing is funny, dude. Okay, it's not dated. No, no, no jokes about chingy there, or nothing like that. There is some dated jokes in there, oh, yeah. like, uh, like there's a reference to. It was before Michael Sam came out. Because oh. it was like a reference to gay athletes that came out, and I okay. was like, "Wow, that's dated." Okay, but the but the juxt of it is is yeah, everything's good. Bruce Jenner still, yeah, is I, Caitlin, I, is yeah, Caitlin? He's still no, he's Bruce, and he's album. Bruce. <laughs> I don't talk about him, <laughs> but he was Bruce. Yeah, I used to have a Bruce Jenner joke, and he was Bruce, <laughs> and this when I recorded this. But no, nah, it's, it's it's ready, man. It's out. Okay. It's funny, man. Check it out. And get it on iTunes right now. It's called "Be a Man at All Times." <laughs> We got some audience feedback today, Kamal. Okay. That's why I got caught slipping earlier. I was yeah, just reading. That. You're supposed to read that during <laughs> the pre-show show prep moment. I know, man. But you checking your fantasy scores. Nah, man. I was looking at some emails. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, man. All right. Audience feedback. Here we go. Because, you know, on the commercial, we always say, you know, stop what you're doing, call. Yeah. Anyway, so we got one of those people. Okay. I always hear you guys say, email us if you're yelling at the radio. Well, I yell at you too plenty, but today I actually had to pull over. Okay. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Mackenzie Be- Be- Bezos deserves that money. Exclamation mark. You guys forget all that goes into being a wife. They are talking about stuff when she sleeps next to him. Quote, unquote, I have an opportunity to sell more books. Should I try it? And she says, maybe next year. Okay. I don't think it should be an automatic to not get half. I guess it's, she feels like we were saying automatically should not get half. I'm not getting the good argument for why not. I think you guys are going by the number, meaning the billions. Mm-hmm. That's what's bothering you. She deserves the money. Your rationale is that she didn't help build the company, but she was there before the company. I don't know. Your rationale was that she didn't help build the company, period. But she was there before the company. That's mm-hmm. her argument. The money came because she was affo- because he was afforded the opportunity to be Jeff Bezos, meaning McKinsey's the reason why he was afforded the opportunity. She was an employee. She might have had the good ideas at the staff meeting. I'm not with Kevin Garnett's girl uh, trying to clean up, but that's another story. She signed a prenup, and he was already an NBA superstar when they met. Girl, bye. Tracy's from Philly. Ah, uh, Tracy, uh, I feel what you're saying, but I don't think I ever said that she didn't deserve any money. Mm-hmm. If the man's worth like what, a hundred and some billion? Sure, hundred thirty-seven. Hundred thirty-seven billion. But billion? He's counting, yeah. Give her five billion. Yeah, give her five billion, or give 10 her ten billion, five hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. I mean, I get that. You yeah. know, what I'm saying she was there from day one, mm-hmm. and giving her ten billion to probably make her the richest woman in the world. Yeah. But thirty six, sixty six. Yeah, that's just crazy. You know, and I, I, 
I'm not disputing all that she's done for this man, but at the end of the day, it was still his company. Yes. And even if she was a, a consultant, consultants don't get half. No, but she's saying, you you know, she's adding the, Tracy's saying the, the laying in the bed next to him and all that stuff. I agree with you, Kamal. That doesn't, to me, add up to half. I just think we call it half because it's, that's just something that we say. Yeah. And I just, and honestly, man, when women start getting taken for half more often, they will start to realize the ridiculousness of right. half. Once it starts happening to more women, Halle Berry got hit. Right. Oprah Winfrey's not going to get clipped. But no. the more women start getting clipped for half of their fortune, let the first woman billionaire make a hundred and make five hundred billion dollars, and then her husband divorce and take half to go sleep with other women. Women will be outraged. Right. The, the issue is, I don't think it'll ever happen. No. And, 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 and well, be, it can well, happen. I mean, honestly, it can happen, but. If 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 the roles were reversed, not, I'm not talking about with um with Bezos, yeah. But if the roles were reversed, and mm-hmm. this was a billionaire woman who gets married, chances are she's going into it with their lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's just that's just the way it is nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah Like yeah. like KG went into it with his lawyers. You mm-hmm. don't go. This ain't 80, 1987. Yeah, you just oh, I'm so madly in love and just go get married. Yeah, now they go into it with their lawyers. And even if you're the baroquest person, yes. You 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 come into the table with a lawyer. Mm-hmm. You can muster up enough to have your lawyer available to to uh, negotiate some type of uh, settlement mm-hmm. in, in in the case of a divorce. Mm-hmm. So I think now with these prenups, you're not going to get half. Mm-hmm. You'll get a big chunk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Depending on why, either, depending on the reason why you guys get a divorce. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So I don't think I don't think a woman will ever get taken. You know, well, I'm not. I'm not saying that, but like, if some who who is available, who's probably been married for like you know ten, fifteen years before she had some money, and then all of a sudden blows up. Uh, I don't. I don't have an example. Of probably right B. There. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> B. Smith is probably no, no. She was already rich when yeah. she got married. Yeah. I don't so know. I don't know, man. That's what it will take. Yeah. Somebody who's been married before prenup, mm-hmm. before they signed the prenup. Yeah. That's all it's going to take. Yeah. It, it, as soon as you feel it, you, then next thing, you know, like, well, how oh, hell no. That man, that man, that man, that man. Yeah, she built this company from the ground up. He didn't do nothing. Hope you don't sound like that, Tracy. Hey, what's up, man? I just had to take a time away from the podcast to let you know. If you want an MRA hat, you can get you one. You know why? We got them for sale. 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 You can get you one in red, blue, black, whatever you want. Just go to the website, themrapodcast.com. That is themrapodcast.com and get you one. Jordan Woods stepped to the red table, Kamala Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. You ever watched that show? Uh, I've seen a couple of uh, clips. Mm-hmm. I, I only watch it when something happens on there. Okay. You know what I mean? Will Smith says something. Oh, that's it. what is it? You okay. Know, big thing. Whenever it makes headlines that somebody was on it, then I'll go back and watch it. Okay. But uh, the wife likes it. Of course. Yeah. She's the target demo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not know. This, I learned a lot from this. My cousin Kyla was insisting that I watch it, so I watched it. And uh, she was right. It was good. I did not realize that Jordan Woods' father worked on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and he knew Will. He was like a sound guy there, sound mm-hmm. engineer. So he knew Will way, way back. So Will, you know, their fan bam, they, their kids grew up together. Will, um, Jaden Smith, Jordan Woods, and then eventually the Kardashian girl or the Jenner girl. They became crew. Okay, and so. Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith was very much, very much like, nah, it would be like if I had a show and uh, your son did something crazy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nah, we, 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 come and, on. And you knew the deal? Yeah. Like, even if I didn't know the deal, like. You still don't get a little I homie. could feel, oh yeah, I could feel <laughs> it. It's like Jada, Jada and Will, like Will even FaceTimed in during the show to, and she calls him Uncle Will. To, to show some love from the set of bad boys. Like, hey, man, 
you know, you good. The world loves to hate. Like, Wait that's their thing. Go he, ahead. He, he called from the set of Bad Boys. He did. I know uh, this is important for Jordan, but Bad Boys is important for us. <laughs> And we need that man working to make sure this thing is completed. It makes, so. it, it makes sure it's funny. Yeah. Make sure it's good. Yeah. He got from the set of Bad Boys. So anyway, um, she basically explained what happened, man. She basically said that she was out hanging with the girls. And it's in L.A. It's a common thing. Now, I can't stand with people when they're, when they're, when they're trying to do their mea culpa apology. When they, when they say something is common, kind of takes the blame off of them. Hmm. It's like if a, a woman beater is like, look, man, it's common where I'm from. Yeah, where uh, I'm- <laughs> when your girl gets smart, you pop that bitch in her mouth, yeah, right? Yeah, where I'm from, yeah, that's, that's just that was just a norm. <laughs> that's so. a normal thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now that takes it off of you. So, but she said it's common where you know in, in LA culture that when you're partying, you go to an after party. Yeah. She did let it slip that that Chloe and Tristan were already broken up. Cause she was like, uh, I understand that it doesn't look good when when my when I go to her ex's house or her, you know, her baby daddy's house. But mm-hmm. so you know, um, but she made it seem like they wasn't together. Right. I'm mean, honestly, that's that right there is a red flag. What? Going to this dude's house. Oh yeah. All these friends. So all you and all your homegirls are hanging out, and then it's like, where are we going? Let's go to. She said basically they always go to somebody's house afterwards, which I get. But then she's saying that she knows this guy, so it makes it even more comfortable. Yeah, but if he broke up mm-hmm. with, you know what I'm saying, your supposedly, yeah, 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 quote unquote fam. Your, your big sister. Yeah. Uh, why are you there? He's off limits. But yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, you gotta side, she's got to side with the Kardashians on this one. She's got to side. Basically, I'm sure it, it wasn't just like, hey, let's part as friends. It might have been some beef in, involved. True. But so, so check out what she says. So yeah. she says they're they're hanging out, they're chilling, and do, through the course of the night, she's not sitting on his lap. There's no lap dance involved, but her she does have her feet dangling over his. Now, footsies to me, playing footsies with somebody is intimate, and I love what they said on Pulp Fiction. Would you give another man a foot massage? <laughs> no. <laughs> you and I are sitting across the table. If our feet ever touch, we pull them back so fast. They would track like. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you're playing footsies with somebody at work or playing foot any kind of foot touching it 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 uh, it suggests intimacy mm-hmm. it just does so she made it seem like it, that's all that was happening my feet were touching and and you know jada called her out a little bit and then she said the part that was really wrong was at the end he gave her a kiss on the lips goodbye she said she did not spend the night. She, there has nothing going on with him. She was never alone with him. She did stay till 7 a.m. Party till the next day. Now, I remember when I was a young whippersnapper, we go hang out. Because I, I I was never a party guy, but I was definitely a kickback guy. Mm-hmm. I love going to the homie's house. That's one thing I miss. What? Just hanging kick, out. Oh, my gosh. Just yeah, hang I, with I your miss people. hanging out. All night. All night. We run the PlayStation. Right. Somebody might, you know, somebody might dip off and hook up a little bit. Right. That's what I miss. Yeah, man. Yeah. So she says uh, she made it seem like she was kind of shocked by it. But it, she was, she said he just shot his shot, which is a Kamal Dujabar term. And she said that basically because she hung out all night, he probably thought it was safe to shoot a shot. Mm-hmm. And she says she didn't pull away. She was drunk, so she doesn't remember everything. But she knows she didn't pull away. The fact that she's bringing in drunk to cut, to to color it in, and doesn't remember to me suggests that what other people saw crossed the line. Hmm. And she can't prove it because she doesn't remember. And she can take a lie detector test because she does remember. She claims, but look, man, <laughs> break it down. This is my take on it, dude. I don't think. And, and and they brought race into it because basically she said, I, I know I'm not the reason they're not together. Young black woman who I'm a young black woman who made a mistake, not a mistake that is worth public crucifixion. And Jada came back and said, black women can be the most disregarded and disrespected women in the game. It, we use the race card a lot as black people, but I have to agree with this. The way the people are so furious with this woman, it's similar to when Michael Richards was mad that the black dude was talking during his set. Like, you're a nigger. Why are you? And that's such a hard R word. But that's what he said. Mm-hmm. Why are you talking while the white man's talking? Yeah. You're a nigger. 
And it feels like the amount of vitriol that she's getting, it I mean, especially from Chloe's fans who are majority white, it's like, how dare you? You got out of your place. That's what it feels like to me. But is it a minor thing? It's minor, but I still think she was out of line for hanging. And you're, you're putting yourself in a situation to fail. And when you put yourself in a situation in the gray area, you have to take responsibility. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, definitely. I, I like to say, like, black men are the most hated uh, creatures on the face of the earth. Yeah. And But having, you know, saying that, I say black women are the most disregarded. Mm. You know, they don't, they just don't even care. Mm-hmm. They don't care to hate them. They just, you know. That's, it's almost like they're not even there for some people. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know which is worse, to be hated or to be just ignored. Yeah, at least recognize me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. I'll say, um, so I admit that, you know what I'm saying? So Jordan Woods is going to be public enemy number one. I actually think she's public enemy number one. I I don't believe race had anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, You think it made it worse? Uh, for the masses, I mean, you know, we... That's all I meant, the masses. The masses, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. The masses, I mean, you know, people just, our, um, you know, we can't really mess up. No, it's it's, it's kind of like if you everybody has a, a racial bias against a certain group, right? And if you get cut off and you look and it's that person, that mm-hmm. group that you don't like, it's just going to make that cut off worse. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you don't like rich white people and you get cut off and it's a rich white person, or if you don't like women and you get cut off by this fine woman, like whatever, whoever it is, yeah. it's just going to be like, Rah! Confirmation bias. Yeah, when it should have just been a flip off. I knew these people were no good, and it (laughs) makes me furious. So I think, I think, um, I think if Jordan, Jordan was smart and she was lucky to have somebody so close to her, yes, that is revered by black women, yes, you know. So you go to Aunt Jada. Thank God for for Aunt Jada. Black woman rehab. I'm singing a different tune because of Aunt Jada. Right, and and because here's the thing about it. You said a majority of Chloe's fans are white. I would say that uh, a big part of the Kardashian business mm-hmm. is that they don't really get attacked by black women, mm. right? Because they do have, you know, they're they're taking the guys. Yeah, right? all of them pretty much. Yeah, all of them. have a black man. Yeah, and so Chloe mm-hmm. cannot afford to have. Every single black woman in America attacking her. Which which made it very curious of how Jordan played the race card on this one. Right. She might have needed it. She needed some rehab. Yeah. She needed some rehab and it kind of took it off of mm-hmm. Jordan and, and, and threw it back on Chloe. Yeah. Because that because it's funny you say that because Uh, When we come back, we're going to read some of Chloe's tweets and how her tweets had an arc. Can I have your attention, please? We are trying to start a movement. You heard that right. We're starting a movement. We're doing something different here at the MRA Podcast. We vibing with y'all. You know what I'm saying, fellas? You know what I'm saying, ladies? It ain't just fellas that listen to the show. Matter of fact, it's the majority women, but it's all good. I know you know somebody that fits with what we try to do over here. So all we need you to do is send it to them. Tell a friend. You know what I'm saying? That somebody know how we get down here at the MRA show, 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 show. It's really called the podcast, but I, I just wanted to rhyme no and show. It's always nice when you have a big homie come out. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was going to junior high, Frisbee Junior High, Rialto, California, my, my cousin Karanja was like, look, man, because he went to Kolb, you're junior high. Yeah. A lot safer at Kolb. <laughs> was it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Frisbee was like that? What? I didn't even know. Man, you must be crazy, man. <laughs> man, we had, we had school shootings before there were school shootings, oh, man. Wow. Oh, yeah, they were shooting at track meets. Damn. Oh, yeah, dude. Frisbee was, anyway, yeah, it was about that life, man. Huh. And so, you know, Kolb was in the country club, the nice section of town and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, Kolb and Frisbee was not. So I remember Karanja told me, hey, man, find a big homie. Friend somebody big because you're going to need them because okay. we have seventh, eighth, and ninth, right? Yeah. So imagine being a seventh grader in school with seventh, eighth, and ninth. It's kind of scary. And so, Chloe, this is proof how having a big homie helps. This is Chloe at first. Why are you lying at Jordan Woods? 
if you're going to try and save yourself by going public instead of calling me privately to apologize first, at least be honest about your story. By the way, you are the reason my family broke up. Capital A-R-E. Later on. Trist, then Twitter comes after. Then Black Twitter is like, mm-hmm. oh, you know. Then she goes on. Then the red table airs. Yeah. And Black female Twitter was like, ah, uh, <laughs> right. So Twitter. So then, then she's then the next tweet is Tristan is equally to blame, but Tristan is the father of my child. Regardless of what he does to me, I won't do that to my daughter. <laughs> I'm gonna read into that for a second. He has been address he has been addressing the situation privately, all caps. If Tristan were to lie publicly about what conspired, then yes, I would address him publicly as well. So of course, that means the Twitter birds came at her and said, Why aren't you bring up Tristan? And she's explaining why mm-hmm. she wouldn't do that because she's not gonna air out the father of the child. Which which sounds Cardi B ish, by the way. Yeah. Because now you're you're sounds, defending yeah, him. it sounds reputable. Like, yeah, well, I'm yeah, not yeah. you know, I'm not gonna air this. Yeah, I'm Whenever not Whenever I say it in public, I'm not gonna air them out because we still gotta deal with each other. Yes, exactly. But you mm-hmm. Jordan Woods. And you went public first. Yeah. Yeah. So then more more virtual, I'm sure. Then she says, This has been an awful week. Now you can tell when <laughs> No humility, the humble pie. Right, right, right. When you right, taste right. it, because oh, the pressure. Oh yeah, this week has been rough. Oh yeah, because now you're going for sympathy. At first, you was firing, mm-hmm. but then after you sober up a little bit, at the black Twitter gets in that ass a little bit, then she says, "This has been an awful week, and I know everyone is sick of hearing about it, as am I. I. I'm a roller coaster of emotions, and have said things I shouldn't have. Honestly, Tristan, cheating on me and humiliating me. All this, all this humility, wasn't." Such a shock. Wasn't such a shock as the first time. What's been harder and more painful next tweet. What's been harder, more painful is being hurt by someone so close to me. Someone whom I love and treat like a little sister. But Jordan is not to be blamed for the breakup of my family. This was Tristan's fault. This was all Tristan's fault. In her mind, and I think she's wrong. I think this was Chloe's fault. I think Jordan crossed the line. I think Jordan should have known not to be hanging around over there. It's just, it's not a good look. Yeah, because to me, he, I mean, to me, Jordan, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Tristan Thompson. Mm -hmm. I don't know the guy, seems like a cool guy. But if she's closer to the Kardashians Mm -hmm. and that's sister and all that stuff and fam bam, then he's the enemy. Yes. He is the enemy. You got to pick a side. There's no going back and forth. No. There's no playing both sides and stuff. I'm cool with both of y'all. Nah, man, you got to choose. But then the other thing she said, then he kissed me. She said that in a red table talk, he kissed me. But she did not say she flinched back. Man. See, the thing about it is he had been building rapport all night long. And she wasn't stopping the rapport. She kept going with it for whatever reason. She might have been torn. But that's where she should have been like, ah. Yeah. You ever kiss, try to kiss somebody who didn't want to be kissed? Yeah. They fucking Does, it doesn't doesn't work. Yeah. They, they have like that Floyd Mayweather shoulder roll. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm Pretty saying? embarrassing. Got that Pretty embarrassing. Lean in if she had missed. done that, if she right. had done that. If yeah. she didn't want to be kissed, yep. she wouldn't have been kissed. She wouldn't have been kissed. Yeah. That's pretty simple. But the reason why I say this is Chloe's fault is because Chloe Kardashian knows who she got. She knows that Tristan Thompson is this dude. Tristan Thompson was the dude that was with somebody else when they met. All right. Pretty sure he had a baby, but that's, you know, whatever lady y'all can look that up. He had a baby mom when they met. Then he cheated on you when you was pregnant. Then he, he has a, he has a history. And if, you know, if y'all broke up again, come on, why do you think you break it up? All right. Mm-hmm. Chloe has a pattern of dudes that like other women. Chloe decided that she's done with this guy because she was embarrassed and hurt. I understand why you're embarrassed and hurt, but you better understand the man you got. Why are you throwing away your family with the man you got? If that's the, if so look, if you're going to, if you're done with this, I get it. If the next guy is going to be a saint, I get it. A little Mm -hmm. more low key, a little more weight on his belly. Mm -hmm. I get it. Dad bod, but you're not doing that. Right. You're going to go to some type of rapper, some type of guy that will do this to you again. So why not just be with the guy that you're comfortable with? I don't understand it. No, I mean, it seems like for their brand, they need somebody famous. They need somebody who has their own press. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They they need that. Mm-hmm. But 
Yeah, I, b- I definitely blame uh, this this Chloe Kardashian woman, and apparently, like a you know, French Montana's old chick said, "Hey, when I was dating, you know, French, yeah. you linked up with him." Yep. And, and so they, he- yeah, they have no problem. That's the same thing with um, Amber Rose said when she was with uh, uh, Kanye. That Kim, so mm-hmm. it's like they want what they want. Yeah, they want what they want, mm-hmm. but don't do it to me, damn it. Boom. Hey, come on, we got listeners all over the world now, man. Yep, yep. And uh, I was wondering, man, how, I wonder how the what the people do while they're listening to our show. I know we got a guy in the Navy who's in Spain. He listens. Um, we got a lady that uh, drives a lift. She listens while she's driving her lift and has her customers listen too, which is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Cat in Brooklyn listens while he delivers some fish. Okay. We want to know from other people, man, how do you listen to our show? What are you doing? Hit us up on the social media. I'm at Kyle Irby. I am at Angry Kamal. And let us know what you're doing when you listen to our show. Kamal, what are you, what are you doing when you listen to the show? Man, I'm usually chilling, man. I take the train to get my son from school. Oh, you do? Yeah, man. You so I get that? the headphones on and I listen to it front and back. The problem is I'm coming back mm-hmm. he wants to talk. Uh, I'm trying to listen so I yeah. have to, you know, try to act like I'm paying attention to him. I'm really listening to my words of wisdom. That's that's good man. Yeah. Pretend like you're listening to your son while you're listening to the podcast. That's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. usually listen to it while I'm cleaning the house, man. Uh, I, I picked... The- well, go ahead. Domestic work? Yeah, man. Oh, come on, dude. I wish. <laughs> I wish I didn't have domestic work, but yeah, man. I usually listen to it if I'm washing the dishes or, you know, folding laundry. I listen to, you know, any kind of thing that I don't have to think. Yeah. And I just get to listen. But I want to know what what are the people listening? What are, the, what are y'all doing? Let us know. Sometimes when you do dirt come out, you affect your boy. Right. Yeah. So if if uh, when word comes out that, you know, you know, me and my lady broke up because I got caught with another woman, it makes you look bad. Oh, definitely. Because <laughs> then they're like, you know, if I tell if I tell my lady that, you know, Kamal Vertita got divorced because Kamal was, you know, banging some chick. Did you know about this? Oh, man. So many people I have to like I can't do pillow talk for. Yeah. I can't do pillow talk with my chick. You know what I'm saying? Let me know, like, let her know that they broke up because I know the reason why they broke up. Yeah, exactly. And so that's going to lead to like another question and another question and another question. Come out. They don't realize how much we shield them from when dudes do dirt. (laughs) At all times. Like our family members that we know are doing it, our buddies that we know. So it gives them the the thought that nobody's doing it. Yeah. Because it's always shielded from these grown women. Yeah. They have no idea how many guys that we know are doing it. And they are like, well, such and such is faithful. I'm like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be dirty macking if you if you put them out yeah. there. Like I told you before, like my lady had told me, has brought up guys that are faithful in my crew. And I just had to be like, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. It's like the La Costa Nostra. Know. It's a it's this thing of ours. So we're never no. going to reveal. They have no idea. They have, they have no. And they think that. That's the thing. They yeah. think they know about these guys. I'm just like, really? Okay. This, yeah. this this honestly with the MRA podcast is supposed to be an opportunity for them to hear real guy talk. Yeah. How guys talk at the barbershop. Uh-huh. But even now, we're still kind of low key, like not oh, wanting to throw. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not throwing it. Well, yeah. I can't mention it's a cold. everything. Yeah. Exactly. So Travis Scott has a Travis Scott is now being affected by the Tristan thing because Travis is with Kylie Jenner and that's the girl and that's Jordan's best friend. The, mm-hmm. That's the one, right? Okay. So then of course because because now her sister's in another cheating scandal from her sister's man. Now she's starting to think, I wonder if my man would cheat. I'm with a rapper that tours the world and gets coochie thrown at him on a daily. The fact that she has to wonder is hilarious to me. <laughs> I wonder if he would cheat. Hmm. So she goes in his phone and she finds a picture that she doesn't like. And she accuses him of cheating. So much so they have a big argument about it. And he has to cancel a show to do damage to control. That makes me furious, come out. So because of Tristan Thompson, this man's finances are being affected. Not just because of Tristan Thompson, because of his woman's insecurity. I'm saying because of the, the, the chain domino. Reaction. Yeah. But the thing is, like, why are we affecting the bad, Kylie? What? When he said, I'm going to cancel the show. Remember we talked about Kevin Garnett missing the Olympics? Yeah. What, ladies. How are you allowing that to be the thing that makes you happy? He's right. missing shows. Right. He should never miss a show. No. 
You'll miss a show for me? And because of what Tristan Thompson did, why does that make one suspicious? Well, it just opens your eyes because you're delusional to think that Tristan would never do that again. And once you see that he would, you start wondering, will mine? Well, see, the thing about it is that's pretty much lumping all dudes. Yeah, but there's types of dudes, Kamal. And if you had to ask me, do you think Tristan... Do you think Travis Scott has women on his side? See, this is an example of me. Not normally, if this were a private conversation, I'd be like, no, but of course I think he has women on the side. I mm. absolutely think he's banging chicks at these shows. Why wouldn't he? Why would you turn it down? Well, yes. Why would you turn it down? Unless you're you're tired of it. Unless you're tired of it, true. And so I, you- I, suppose, I, 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 I feel, well, I don't know, because I think there there comes a point. Yeah. Where guys get tired of like banging groupies. But I, I mean, get tired I, I'm assuming. Of, I get I'm tired ass- of spaghetti. Yeah, All I'm right. assuming. But you know what happens when I get tired of spaghetti? You move on? I need to stop eating spaghetti for a while. <laughs> but eventually when You're I smell the spaghetti, to- <laughs> come on, man, the right circumstance, the right yeah. spaghetti. But even still, even something like that, even something like that, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if Travis Scott, let's say he's tired of spaghetti, yeah. and he'll come back to it. Yeah. But he might, I mean, to to think, let me check and see if he's come back to it today. Well, let me tell you this, man. I don't like it. What I don't like is the delusion. If if there's something in the phone that makes you upset and he's like, I, I, I didn't do it. I'm telling you right now, I think he did it. If there's something, what, like there's, there's nothing in your phone, Kamal, that's going to make you look bad. I don't think there is. I don't like the detective work. I don't like it either. Yeah, that's my thing about it. So be, before... Before she actually discovers yes. the quote unquote, she's already dirt, wrong. She's already wrong. She's, she's already snooping. Already wrong. She committed. She committed the crime. Yes. Before she did anything else, it yes. was it was a, it was a, a flag. flag. Yes. You know everything else. Everything else after that, I feel is you know what I'm saying inadmissible. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it was inadmissible. You should first of all, you shouldn't have to look at your phone. Then if you go on the phone, and you find evidence. Don't. Why are you lying to yourself? Why are you lying to yourself? You're lying to yourself. Mm-hmm. You're lying to yourself. It's going to come out. Come on, man. Here it is. Exclusive. You heard it from here first. Travis Scott will get caught cheating on Kylie. It's going to happen. Well, what's going to happen is somebody's going to come out yes. and cry to Kylie Jenner. I'm sorry. Yep. I had no idea. <laughs> I really... And that's how he's going to get caught. Yes. Travis Scott is not going to get caught slipping. Yes. Somebody's going to snitch. Yeah. As a matter of fact, how did uh, Tristan get caught? Because other people at the party snitched. Other people at the party told so, that she was there all night. But then, yeah, she spent the night, but she didn't spend the night like that. Okay, so my question is, how did the media... So I don't believe this stuff, Kyle Irby. How did the media... I, initially, I thought that, like, in the club, he got caught with a... You know, somebody snapped a picture or something no, like that. No, So some private stuff got out? It got back to, I think it got back to Chloe. And Chloe put it on black, like, mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff, man, you got to take with a grain of salt, man. You got to Well, look maybe at it. the person went to the media, but but either way, I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't think Jordan Woods is lying about this. But but even if she is, which I don't think she is, and you might think she, I think you think she is. I think everybody's lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you this, man, when I think, and this feels like I'm Dirty Mac, and I'm not Dirty Mac, and what I am saying is, uh, I would think that Travis Scott uh, is going to get caught cheating, and I don't think it should affect. It's like it's like saying you know you're not going to listen to you're not going to watch Pulp Fiction because Harvey Weinstein was behind it. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Fucking enjoy Pulp Fiction. Enjoy the goddamn movie. And and or you know that movie that Kevin Hart did with uh in, when his buddy when the guy, Brian Cranston was in a w- wheelchair. That's a that's a heart that's a Harvey Weinstein movie. Is it? Yeah, it was. They mm. they took it from him, but this is still his fucking movie. He put it together, mm. but it's like who gives a shit, man? Get over it. And so, yes, I do believe that there's a good chance Travis Scott's gonna get caught slipping with another chick. And I also believe that that should be irrelevant because of all the other contributions Travis Scott has made to his relationship. Right? Is he a good dude or not? Forget the fact that yeah, when you weren't there, he was getting slobbed up by some you know waitress in Memphis. That has nothing to do with you. Yeah. That's I mean, I think that's the toughest part for me as far as like when women 
have one of these these guys mm-hmm. who you know who travel a lot yeah. and are pretty well recognized and have their own stable of uh of groupies. Yeah. Now, if you are like Doug Christie's wife and you follow them all over, you know, so, okay, he's mm-hmm. probably never going to cheat. No. He has no no reason to cheat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? His wife is always there. Yeah. But if you got your own thing going mm-hmm. and you're in France, yeah. When he gets off the he he gets off the stage and he's he's ready. Yeah, yeah. He's ready, and you're like in, in Singapore selling some product. Yeah. What is he supposed to do? Well, he's supposed to turn it down. But my thing is, it's not affecting your relationship. It really isn't. It's not. Yeah. And it's the thing not. about it is, like, if you're not looking, you you chances are you'll never know. This because I always say this as well. When let's say uh, Kylie checks his phone. She sees nothing. Mm-hmm. Does he get treated? Does he get a reward? Does he get a reward? <laughs> that's, a, that's one of my favorite Kamal Abdul Jabbar jokes. Does he get a reward for when you f- go to look for his stuff? Yeah. And he doesn't find it and you don't find it? No. So he's, a lose, he's going to eventually lose because you'll eventually find something because that's what you're looking for. Yeah. See, my ex wife would look, nothing in my phone. Mm-hmm. I got no reward. Guess what she would do? I'm looking later. No. What? Move on to my email. Oh my gosh. It's hilarious. Nothing in the email. <laughs> Move on to my car. Mm-hmm. I know this nigga's dirty. Mm-hmm. Were you? <laughs> Are you yelling at your radio right now? You know, what the hell are you saying? You wrong, Kyle. You wrong, Kamal. Yeah. Or, 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 right, right. That's what I'm talking about. Word, yeah. word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, then tweet us. Stop what you're doing unless you're driving. Stop what you're doing. Hit us right now. Respond to us. You know, just talk to us right now. Let us know yeah. how you feel. I'm at Kyle Irby. I'm at Angry Kamal. Or you can hit us both at The MRA Podcast and let your voice be heard. Yeah, man. You know, so we'll read it. We might even respond. And you just might hear it on the show. Yeah, man. Be a celebrity for a day. <laughs> yes, <I> man. Just <laughs> stop what you're doing. Hit us up, man. You, you'll get a response. Yes, sir. CEO of the San Francisco Giants hated San Francisco Giants. I'm a Dodgers fan. Are you a Dodgers fan, Kamal? No. Oh God, you're a Yankees fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Yankees fan. You don't fan. like anybody in LA but USC. Yeah. Well, I'm a Dodgers fan. Uh, no love for the San Francisco Giants. However, hated mail of the week is Larry Bayer. Is that how you say his last name? Yeah, I think Bayer. We all know. What I'm about. Yeah. Guy was caught on tape. In an altercation with his wife. Now, I like many things, I see things from Twitter first. Yeah. And I see the Twitter outrage first. <laughs> this man was mad not to look his wife. Well, uh, a few more comedians said, that's why you shouldn't get married. Which I was like, yeah, I actually like that. Like, it was like these, this barbarian. And then I was read her statement. And she said, quote, I took his cell phone. Here we go again. He wanted it back, and I did not want to give it back. I started to get... It makes me so furious, Kamal. That's his. That's not yours. Mm -hmm. I took his cell phone. They're in public arguing. He wants his phone back. Yeah. She won't give it back. If it was the other way around, they'd be calling the police talking about, you're stealing her property. property. Property, yeah. I took his cell phone. He wanted it back, and I did not want to give it back. I started to get up in the chair I was sitting in began to tip. Due to an injury I sustained in my foot three days ago, I lost my balance. I did not sustain an injury based on what happened today. Here's the part. (laughs) This is the chick. The women do this all the time. It makes me. It's so hilarious to me. Larry and I always have been and are still happily married. Why do they always want to put up a facade of a happy marriage canal? What, oh. What is that? But see, this is this is what I like. Okay. Larry Bear's wife is down. Oh yeah. I watched that video. Yes. This is not what happened. What happened? Her statement, mm-hmm. that's not what happened. Well, what happened? She he she took the phone, mm-hmm. he tried to get it back. He bumped into her when she fell. Okay. When she falls, she, she says, like, help! Like, yeah, that, no, yeah. Yeah, she yelled out, oh my God, yeah. no! Yeah, and she yeah. called help and stuff like that. And he's trying to uh, get the wrestling her for the phone. Yeah. All this stuff about losing her balance. He bumped into her. This is a crafted uh, <laughs> statement yes. Yes. from a lawyer. I Previously, I hurt my foot, so yeah, I lost yeah, my yeah. balance. Yeah, now yeah, he bumped yeah. into her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, because she realized I was, we was mad at that moment. Yeah, she's protecting the bag. 
She's protecting the bag and the brand, which goes back to the bag. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because what she doesn't want, she doesn't want to make a big stink about this. And then you get the Twitter brigade yes. and, 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 uh, out there against Larry Bear, and they make him give up his position yes. to the Giants. Now what are you going to do? You, now <laughs> what are you going to do? Because he's not getting hired. Yeah. He's done. Yeah, he's the CEO of the Giants. They will go in there and remove this man from his position. Yep. And now what? Now what? Now what are you going to do? Even if you get divorced, what are you going to get? Right. So I applaud Larry Bear's wife. Yeah, buddy. Protect his back. She realized this is big. I mean, okay. It's bigger than Nino Brown. Yeah. I, I, I was mad. We get, I've been mad at the motherfucker before. It happens. It happens. It just yeah. so happens it got caught on video. Yeah. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stand tall mm-hmm. like a good teammate. Yeah. And say, hey, man, uh, nah, this was misunderstanding. We're, we're good. And she owned the fact that it, she's the one that took herself on, which I love. She put it off on her. Because she did take herself Because on. this man <laughs> did nothing his, wrong. He didn't hit her. He didn't punch her in the face. You know, he was grabbing his phone back. San Francisco Giants board members. Mm-hmm. This man did nothing wrong. No. And now he's on sabbatical so it can look like, you know, take some time with his family. While he's, they're all right. trying to save face. The question I have, though, man. Have you ever noticed that women always want to make like their marriage is going well? Why do you think they do that? I think it's embarrassing to some. To, I mean, especially the old way of thinking. Mm-hmm. If you had a bad marriage or your marriage fails, that 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 was probably a reflection on the woman. Mm-hmm. You know, because guys don't seem to give a damn no. if their marriage sucks. No, well, we would we would give a damn if we're getting like chumped out and everyone sees it. Yeah, in other words, if we're we're a henpeck. Right, but if yeah. you're just arguing half the time, no, like nobody's like, damn, dude, your marriage sucks. Nobody. Yeah, like man, you know, if 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 you found out that my marriage wasn't happy, as a guy, I'm not feeling embarrassed, but the woman's gonna be embarrassed. Right. So that's something that that's the facade they have to put up, man. Why though? Society. Yeah. I think I think honestly. Uh, I think as we're we're moving forward, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's starting to you starting to see that less and less. Mm-hmm. You know, we're a lo- unit, we're tight, we're a strong unit. Yeah, because a lot of women are getting divorced. A lot yeah. of people, it's not such a, it's not like, like such a scarlet letter like it yeah. used to be. Yeah. Like the D, oh, you divorcee. Hey, it's like nah, man. Especially uh, when you're from wealth. Yeah. Question before we uh, get to the dear Irby. Do you think he would say the same thing about their marriage if they asked him that their marriage is strong uh, and they're happy? I think he'd be like, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he'd be I like, our marriage he, is strong yeah. and we're happy. He'd be like, we're fine. Yeah. I think, you know, if he's anything like me, he's still mad. Uh, <laughs> I was snatching that phone. There he is. Like, <laughs> so he'd be like, uh, ask me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Hey, if you're enjoying the podcast, do us a favor. Tell a friend. That's it. Costs you nothing, helps us out, and gives your friends some entertainment to make that commute a little easier or gives them some company on a workout or while they're cleaning the house so it helps them out, helps everyone out. All right, so please subscribe, leave a positive comment, and share, share, share. Let's get into this Dear Irby letter. Yes, sir. Dear Irby. Well, it didn't say Dear Irby, but... It's the Dear Irby segment. I need your advice. I'm 32, single, and very comfortable with my body and sexual expressiveness. If I connect with someone, I feel free to let nature take its course, and I never feel stifled by society's rules for females. I love her already. (laughs) But now, I'm ready to be in a relationship. It doesn't have to be monogamous. I just want our relationship to be the main one. I really love her. (laughs) I want to have a boyfriend. I want to go out on dates like that. I'll go out a lot and get a lot of attention from men, but there are times that a man who has obviously given me a welcoming look doesn't come up to me. I have no problem going up to him, but I cap all caps, but I just don't want to look thirsty. I dress like I like. I don't wear bras. I have nipple rings. I love my body because I'm looking for something more stable. I'm not having sex as soon as I meet the guy. He might think so because I'm comfortable with myself, but I have no problem telling him that when we meet, that it's not going down. All caps, but I am concerned about looking thirsty. Can you help me? Also, I identify as an African American, and I prefer African American to men. I wonder why she says identify. She might be of a... Half or something. Yeah, Mm -hmm. she might be, what do you call that stuff, uh... 
What do you call it? I don't know. Uh, Dominican? No. Double, I don't know, dual mix. Yeah, mix. Yeah, but it's a, it's a biracial. A lot of biracial. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't think yeah. of that term to save my life. Right. Do you think black guys could handle my polyamory? I'm not saying I will always want to be with other men, but I love my fluidity from Nadia in Brooklyn, New York. I don't even know polyamory. You ever heard me talk about polyamory? Come on. What the hell is that? It's basically when you, uh, it's the it's the nice way to say you prefer m- multiple long-term relationships. Uh, you want to be with more than one person. Uh, yeah. Big fan of it. This black guy couldn't handle it. This black guy meaning come out of the Yeah, this black guy couldn't handle it, man. Mm-hmm. Now, I like everything she's saying, mm-hmm. but man, I would have a hard time if, you know, on a Thursday, my girl's off with, with Josh or something like that. Yeah. You know, like, hey, where are you going? Oh, you know me and Raheem are going to, oh, <laughs> slow, slow down. But that makes people lie to you, Kamal. Yeah. When you can't handle the truth, that's why you get lies. And that's why I would have a problem with this whole thing. Everything mm-hmm. else I like. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Well, I would, I would, I'm thinking that basically the man can have some side. Hilarious. I just, I mean, yeah. me personally, man, I can't imagine somebody else smashing my chick. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't imagine that. What about, I don't want to look thirsty. Should she go up to the guy? Look thirsty. Look thirsty because honestly, man, the way I mean, she's she's describing herself to look like really, really sexy. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of dudes, man, can be intimidated. Yes. If she's like a dime piece mm-hmm. out there and just, you know, just all eyes on her. Yes. And it's like, you know what? If I go up there to shoot my shot because all eyes are on her, everybody's gonna see me. Fail. Fail. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And because of, you know, probably the way she looks, it's a good chance that I might not succeed. Mm. And so I know me personally, I probably would prefer her to come up to me. So look thirsty if you have to, man, mm-hmm. because, you know, a lot of guys can be intimidated. And I'm then, intimidated. Right. And so if you come up to him, you approach the guy, mm-hmm. basically, man, now he's 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 a little bit more comfortable. He can be himself absolutely. now. Yeah, absolutely. Can, oh, okay. I realize she's cool. And you can have that conversation that you desire mm-hmm. because the guy comes up to you, he's going to assume you want a, you want a certain type of guy. Yeah, I'm so not, that's when I'm not like trying the to get flossing rejected. and yeah. the lying and, and like the slick lines. Mm-hmm. That's 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 gonna come into play. Yes, but if you approach him, he's like, "Whew, okay, that was the hard part's over." Yeah, now I could be myself, and you can decide whether or not this is the guy for your poly polyamory polyamory. And when you approach not. a guy, you're not necessarily that doesn't necessarily mean you want to smash. You're no. not not being you're not on him. No. The thirsty part comes in when you when you after you approach him or even after he approaches you. All right, guys, now it's time for the lesson of the day. Ladies, don't worry about looking thirsty. You're helping us out a lot when you up to talk to us because I know you're scared of getting shot down, but we're we're not shooting women down like no. that. Not like you guys shoot us down. No. You guys are shooting us down left and right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like we're, we're tired of getting shot down. That's why he's not. When a guy's not coming up to you, it's because he's just like, I just don't feel like getting rejected. I'm tired. Right. Especially I mean, if y'all, he's peeping. He's peeping. You guys are yeah. peeping each other. He ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Yeah, dude is a little bit like. My wife walked up to me when we met. I was like, wow. Okay. She was trying to hook me up with a friend. I never did smash <laughs> her friend up. But yeah, man. I mean, look, dude. I love it when a woman walks up to a dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like the confidence. I like it. Uh, you, it doesn't necessarily mean you're thirsty. It just means you know what you like and, you know, you might be a little assertive. Now, you can be intimidating because of the way you dress. And, you know, she's like, I'm uncomfortable with my body, sexual expressive. So she dresses sexy. Nipple yeah. rings. That is intimidating. Right. She it's don't wear no like, bras. Yeah, like, like you, you feel your heart beating faster. Yeah. So, Yes. The, the other, so the first question was, I don't want to look thirsty. Can I help you? Yes, you're not going to look thirsty. Even if you do, who cares? Because if you really are thirsty, it'll be revealed sooner or later. So who cares? Just, mm-hmm. just talk to him if you feel like it. If you want him to talk to you, you can play that game too. I identify as an African American. I prefer, or do you think a black guy can handle my polyamory? It depends on the black guy. Kamal said, no. No. <laughs> I want to be able to handle it, to be honest. Um, how I could handle it? 
any girl in wit can do anything she wants. I'm going to say that on the record. You do anything you want to do. I don't necessarily want to be lied to, but I definitely don't want the details. I don't need to know you're going out with Raheem. I don't need to know that Raheem smashing correctly. I don't need to know that, you know, I don't need to hear the details of the day. I I would like to work my way up to hearing about it like a friend. Like if you like, let's just say you, you know, this is Kamal's faces. You should see this. <laughs> oh, I want to work up to be able to hear about it. Like Kamal, if you were to smash something and you were a free agent, I would want to hear the details. Right. Right. Like I want I want to be able to be able to <laughs> I want to be able to like watch the tape one day. I would be right. crying, you know. I, but I would be enjoying it at the same time. I'd be embarrassedly, I'd be hurt and excited at the same time. See, the thing about it is, I guess I would probably, it would probably, it would probably help me out more to know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Because in my imagination. It's worse. Oh it's much God. worse. Oh, if, I, if, you, if you went out with Raheem at yeah. 8. You get home at 12 or something like that. I'm like, dinner was over at 9 30. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It's a 15 minute drive from the, you know. Yeah. And so my imagination is probably worse than reality. Oh, it always is. Yeah. And women's imagination is always worse than reality. Yeah. That's why they my, get so mad. <laughs> yeah, mine is too. Yeah. So, yeah, I, no. So, yeah, it would depend on the black dude. I personally would like to, uh, I, I'm cool with it. Uh, I, I'd be down with it and I want to be more better. I just think people, the person's going to have to be able to, you're going to have to see if they can handle the truth. Now, I'm just going to guess, depending on the type of black dude, I think it's going to be a hard sell to most black men to share their woman. Well, I think starting out. Yeah. Just dating. Mm-hmm. I don't think he minds. Yeah. But once, you know what I'm saying, you guys want to. To, to step it up a little bit, mm-hmm. and, he, and that's your dude. Yeah. Then yeah, you might you might have a problem. Here's the thing about it: it's not even just like a black man. I think most guys wouldn't like this. Well, it depends. I don't it think depends. this is. I don't think this is a race issue. A race. Like I think a, it is a race issue. You think a black blacks are well, like think about black people, right? We we're slow to embrace certain changes like homosexuality. White folks are early investors in homosexuality. They're cool with it. They, they were the first to be like, yeah, it's fine. Black people are still like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? There's certain, we're very old school. We're very conservative as a people. Mm-hmm. And so we, and we're very macho as a people. Right. So we're not trying to be embarrassed. I'm telling you the big way to hit a man, a macho man, especially a black man is his lady. If his lady has been is loose, that's that's just a lot of dudes can't handle that. No, I I truly cannot. <laughs> yeah, so it's like that's why it's it. I get why she'd be concerned, but you know what? I think there's. I don't want to say there's a perfect match for everyone because I just found sounds too airy fairy. But I do think that whatever you desire is out there, and uh, um, don't be delusional. And think you're gonna have a certain type of black dude, but uh, you can get him in black. You just may not be able to, you know what I mean? You may not, you ain't probably going to get Dr. Dre. That's not realistic. Yeah. He's maybe too macho for that. You know what I mean? LeBron's probably not going for that. But there's a good dude, there's, there's a good black dude that's willing to go for it. I think it's n- it, temporary. Temporarily, mm-hmm. a dude to go for it. But once he's ready to, to take it to the next level, mm-hmm. the mother dude's got to go. Hey, what's up, y'all? If you like this show, you want to help us offset some of these costs, man, you feeling the need to donate, then do just that. Go to www.patreon.com and make a donation to The MRA Podcast. That is The MRA Podcast with Kyle and Kamal, and you can find us at Patreon. Or you can catch us in the street and just be like, hey, man, I love y'all. I want to bless you with some cash and put some dollars in our pocket. You can do that. Or you can hit us on Venmo find our names and just you know bless us with dough on venmo or you could pray for us do that too <laughs> but we prefer cash if you guys have a dear Irby letter send us an email at dear Irby at the mra podcast.com that is dear Irby at the mra podcast.com where can we find you man on the twitter machine you still looking for nadia her no, phone number no 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 man i'm looking at the <laughs> where can we find <laughs> I was like, hey man, did I leave a phone number? Nah, man. I, I'm looking at the work we find you at Angry Kamal at Twitter, man. I'm throwing you under the bus, man. I'm being stupid. <laughs> <laughs>
But uh, you can find me at Kyle Irby uh, at the MRA podcast, uh, KyleIrby.com. You can find my you know my commercials and my videos. Uh, I'm going to give you all an update from the cruise, man. Hit us at the MRA podcast.com. Ladies, especially Nadia, we love you. Fellas, be a man at all times. Deuces. MRA. You two always tell me exactly what I need to hear. That is my favorite podcast.